brother is going right into the law. He's teaching you. And notice the scripture that he quoted was what? Read it again. Isaiah 58 and 1. 58 and 1. Read. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Cry aloud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. And what is the transgression of my people? Which we went into earlier. My people is referring to the children of Israel. Now let's jump to the 13th verse. Same chapter. Read. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. Wait a minute. It said if thou turn thy foot away from the Sabbath. Read. From doing thy pleasure. From doing your own pleasure. On my holy day. On who holy day? The Lord's holy day is today. That's what the brother's going into. So in the same breath, in the first chapter, he says, show my people. You so-called blacks, Latinos, Haitians and Jamaicans. You are the children of the Lord. And these are your sins and your transgressions. Read 13 verse again. Isaiah 58 verse 13 If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath What's your question, Sister Rio? From doing thy pleasure on my holy day And call the Sabbath a delight The holy of the Lord Honorable and shalt honor him Not doing thine own ways Nor finding thine own pleasure Nor speaking thine own words You hear that? So that's what's required That's what the brothers up here teaching you to not do your own thing, not to follow your own words, but on his holy day, which is Saturday, is the Lord's holy day today. What was your question? No, according to the white, according to the Bible, the white people cannot be saved, as you want to say. All right? They can't make it into heaven. Our heaven is going to be their hell. All right? Just like their heaven, because heaven and hell is conditions on earth. Their heaven is, guess what? It's our hell. Ain't no funeral home. It ain't the Teradome, neither. Welcome to hell. We're living in hell right now. Believe it or not. What about who? What about what children? But what about black children? Pick up this sign right here. Let me show you. No, I want, I want to do it this way. Pick up that sign right there. I want to show you something about our children first. See that right there? See that man right there, that white man? Look what he got, what he's doing to the little child. Do you see that picture right there? That's true history. They took our children and they bashed their heads up against the wall. What about our children? That's right. That's what you should be saying. But no, you, I know what you got. You got this on your mind. Where he at? Flip them over. This is what you got in your mind, sister. Cesar Borges, the fake image of Christ. That's what you got on your mind. That's why you're worried about what about the white man and his little babies. But what about our children, our ancestors, our forefathers who were destroyed in slavery for over 400 years? Who our children were sold as alligator bait in the Everglades of Florida. Did you know about that? Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging. From the poplar trees. Over the years, I've been collecting artifacts. As a matter of fact, I've been collecting little pencils like this. I've been, I've seen uh, alligators uh, on jars. I've seen alligator ashtrays, and I've seen them depicted with kids in it. And I was wondering why the children would be there. As a matter of fact, this particular pencil sharpener. This is a pencil sharpener or a pencil holder with a kid, a black head of a baby sitting out of, the, out of its mouth. I didn't pay any attention. I have uh, been collecting for quite a few, few years and I have the, uh, uh, the posters and things like that about different things. And then one day I was down in Florida. I'd gone down with my wife and I took a trip for myself off to the Wild Blue Yonder going out to hunt artifacts. 
And in my quest to hunt artifacts, I came upon a pawn shop in, Sa in Sanford, Florida. In the pawn shop was a gentleman who owned it. They went and got him and told him I was there and I wanted to buy some of the shackles he had hanging around the walls. I asked him, uh, could I buy them? He said no. He didn't want to sell anything. He just wanted me to see it. Then we began to talk. Uh, and I asked him, I said, look, please let me buy something. I got to take something from here. He says, no. He says, uh, I don't want to sell anything. He said, but uh, I'm going to the back and I'll sit down. Meanwhile, he came out. And uh, came back out and he began to talk to me. He said, you know, he said, you probably don't know this. He said, but uh, years ago, he said, my great-grandfather, my grandfather, before he died, told me of the things they would do. He said he would go down. He said his grandfather said they would go down and they would take babies with them. I said, what do you mean babies? He says, well, let me tell you. He said the slave babies, the slaves who had babies, they would steal the babies during the course of the day, sometimes when the mothers weren't washing. I said, what do you mean babies? I said, you mean babies like five or six years old? He says, no. These babies, some would be infants. Some would be a year old. He said, some would be toddlers. He said, they would grab these children and take them down to the, the swamp and leave them in pens like little chicken coops. They would go down there at night, take these babies and tie them up because they hunted the big bull alligators. These big bull alligators were not raised on the farms. They were in the wild. These alligators would weigh six, seven, eight hundred pounds. Those are the ones they wanted. They would skin them, make the wallets, get the meat, do different things with them. He said, but what they were doing was tie them up, put a rope around their neck and around their torso, around here, and tie it tight. He said, the baby, I said, well, what would the babies be doing? He said, well, my grandfather said they'd be screaming. He said, what would you do? He said, say, just let them scream. He said, what they would do, he would help them to chum the water. He said, when they would throw the babies in tied to this rope, he said, in a matter of minutes, he said, the alligators were on them. He said, the alligators would clamp his jaws on that child. Swat as a matter of fact, once he clamped on them, he was really swallowed. He was, you couldn't see anything but the rope. And we would pull the alligator in and tie his nose and hit him in the head with an ax, a pickaxe. He said, we would then drag him to the shore. We drag him to the shore and leave him lay, and we would do it again, maybe two or three times a night. He said, I said, so what do you mean? He said, well, yeah, they were taking these babies and killing them for alligator bait. I said, so all these things I've been collecting, all these things I've been collecting are really, really something that I can really talk about and say they're of a truth by what you say. He said, I'm telling you, he said, nobody wants to talk about it. He said, I'm only telling you because you're here. I may never hear from you again. He said, but these things actually depict the acts that they did to slave babies back in the bayou country and down the south. They did this. They hunted alligators with these babies. That's why they call alligator bait. You see, that's why I say you're not listening to what you're saying. You're saying, why does color matter? But then I ask you, does the Bible matter? You says yes. But guess what? The color is in the Bible. Color is in the Bible. Color is in the Bible. No, let's not jump from here to there. Let's deal with one thing at a time. Because you not have not confessed that what we just said according to the scriptures are true. And you're running on to something else before you acknowledge what we just said is true according to the Bible. So now we have to prove it. Let's see what Solomon said. First chapter in the first verse. Do you know who Solomon came from? Solomon was the, the uh, son of David. All right, he was a Judite from the tribe of Judah. So let's see what Jews look like. Let's see what the real identity of the Jews look like. Read what you got. You got it? Read. The song, the book of the song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. Uh-oh, say it again. I am black. Do you hear that, sister? So you said color don't matter. But guess what? Color's in the Bible. Read it again. I am black. I am what? I am black. What you say? Yes, it is. You better pull it up. Yeah, you better pull it up, sister. Get your Bible, because we're not reading from no other book. This is the Bible over here, sister. 
You know what it is? You've been brainwashing your doctrine. That's why you don't see it. Show it the Bible. Come on, brother, let us see it. Read it. We're going to show you more. Let's get the black scriptures. Let's get Jeremiah and the one in Job. Y'all know what I want. Let's get them real quick. Now, I want you to read along. All right? One and one. We're going to read it one more time. Read. The book of the Song of Solomon out of the Holy Bible, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. You hear that? Now let's read on. I am black. But come you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of the dawn, as the curtains of Solomon, look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun hath looked upon me, so it said, don't look upon me because I'm blessed and beautiful. But the word calmly means beautiful. That's what the word calmly means. So Solomon said, I am black and beautiful. That's basically what he's saying. You got the one in uh, Jeremiah. Listen to the one in Jeremiah. Read. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Wait a minute, sister. You ask a question, you gotta get the answer. Because then this is no avail if you come up here and try to dictate and, and ask legitimate questions and then go home and you're still confused. We're gonna deal with you according to thus says the Lord, what is written. But you gotta be obedient to him. So read Jeremiah now. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. They are what? They are black unto the ground. The Jews are what? They are black unto the ground. How clear is that for you, sister? Now let's get the identity of our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ. Because you got a problem with color, but then you don't understand that color's in the Bible. You said it wasn't in the Bible, didn't you? You didn't say that? I'm sorry, it's the other thing. All right, but you said color doesn't matter. Now you understand it doesn't matter? Because I'm going to show you why. Get Jeremiah 17, verse 4. I'm going to show you why. You're still back with white people. What about the Chinaman? What about him? What about the African? What about the Arab? No, the white man. I told you, you got him on your mind. That's why you thinking about the white man. What about the white man? Here it is. All people are being destroyed. We got black on black crime. We got the highest addictions of HIV. Our women and single parent mothers in the household. And you're worried about what about the white man? Do you see your mindset, sister? You are lost. You need to wake up. I'm sorry. You have no clue what's going on. You don't. No, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I don't hate them. The Bible, the Most High said, he hates them, not me. Well, here we go. Let's get Romans 19.13. See, you keep putting your foot in your mouth because you have not read the Bible. I'm going to show you that. Read this. You said Christ don't say that? We're going to find out what Christ said. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written. As it is what? As it is written. Jacob, have I loved? Who is Jacob, sister, that you love? That's these people right on that side. The 12 tribes of Israel. All right? Oh, yeah, we're going to keep reading. Read. As it is written, Jacob, have I loved? But Esau, have I hated? Uh-oh. Do you hear that word, hate? Call where you at. Quote the scripture again. The book of Romans in the Holy Bible, chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Do you hear that? How clear is that to you? Oh, I'm going to finish, but I want to make sure you understand. Because you're trying to look for something that ain't nothing there. That's what you're doing. So you want to hurry up and run from this before understanding what this is referring to. So where you running to? You got nowhere to run. Just listen to what is being spoken so you can learn. Let's get it, and let's go to Hebrews. There you go, Hebrews 12, verse 16, let's get it. Because what you fail to understand, I want to put one in the Revelation. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any 
be fornicator. I want you to pay close attention to you ignoring it again. This is why you have no understanding. Get first Corinthians 6 I want you to listen again. All right? Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Do you understand what happened in the history during the time of Jacob and Esau when he was born? And Esau sold his birthright. Because he was a profane person. He was a fornicator. Before we go back to that, I want you to read this. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you notice know sister says, not the righteous. She's not, no, I'm going to just go ahead and teach. So it edify everyone else. So it tells you that not even the righteous shall inherit the kingdom of God. So what is the unrighteous? Let's find out. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. Uh-oh, that's that word. Neither what? Neither fornicators. Now let's read back in Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator. Esau is what? Lest there be any fornicator. Esau is what? Or profane person. A fornicator and a profane person. Now let's read it again in um, Corinthians. First Corinthians 6 and 9. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So you see that? So the Esau, which was a fornicator, a profane person, the scripture said, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's it's right. just that clear. So read it again. The book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. He was what? He was rejected. So there go your white man, sister, and his little children. They are going to be rejected. Come on, Shem, you got something? This is from uh, the Bible Dictionary about Esau, the nation of Edom. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great future judgments. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. Uh-oh. So here it is. She asks a question, and she is knowing everything in the Bible, showing you how much respect she has for the word of the Lord. But if we was a bunch of crackers up here teaching the Bible, she'll be all ears. But she, because she has a self-hatred, and it goes back to the winning lynch letters and the curses that the Most High put upon our people for being rebellious. She has the doctrine of Willie Lynch. She don't respect the man. She don't respect the black man. That's number one. She don't respect the Lord. She don't respect the, our women hate this truth. Our people hate this truth. Not only the women, the men as well. She the one who hates, but she want to flip it and say we hate. She don't understand that this is love, what we're teaching. But she don't understand the love of the Lord. Then what is love? If you say it's not love, then show me what love is. Show me what it is. You got all the mouth, but you ain't got no question except for nine. Except for nine. Cut that off. What? Not, what what is love? Since you got all the mouth and you claim the love. What is love? You don't know. So walk down the street. Because you don't know this Bible. All you want to come up here with emotions. The Lord is not dealing with emotions. The Lord is dealing with the truth according to the Bible. Unless you come up and humble yourself and repent, you're not going to get the kingdom. It's just that simple. You got something? Read. Revelations chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. But our people don't want to believe the judgment that's going to come upon the other nation. That's right. But right now, we're not concerned with the other nation. We're concerned with you. You Israelite to convert and keep the laws of God. 
because we don't care if some don't believe because this is what the Bible said. Read the book of Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Because are you some of you Israelites out there, you don't believe in this Bible. You give a lot of lip service. You say how much you love the Lord. But then when it comes to the law of commandments of the Most High, you don't want to keep commandment number one. When it tells you to honor his Sabbath day, you don't want to keep the Sabbath day. You want to make up all excuses to break the commandments of the Lord and say, I got faith, I got grace, I got this, I got that. But what does the Bible say? The Bible never told us to break the commandments of the Most High in Christ. So read. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. So no matter if you believe or you don't, it's not going to change the judgment that is written in this Bible. You can't change the outcome of what is written. I don't care how emotional you get for the other nations. You are going to be destroyed right with the other nations and their doctrines and their philosophies. That's why the book of Revelation says this. Get Revelations 18 verse 4. You get me on Amos 9 and 7. Revelations chapter 18 verse 4 And I heard another voice from heaven saying Come out of her my people There go my people again Notice the Lord is always specifying his people My people Come out of her Come out of America and America lies America philosophies Come out of her my people Read That ye be not partakers of her sins that you be not partakers of her sins. What are the sins of America? Christmas, Christianity, all these different doctrines established by the so-called white men. Their democracy, same-sex marriages, adultery running rampant here in America. Just have a boyfriend. Go screw everybody you had. Have casual, casual uh, relationships. Don't get serious with nobody until you reach the age of 30 or 40 or when your career is successful. When you get a successful career, then you get married. By then you dogged out. Who wants you after that? All you women that's going around in this single lifestyle, committing whoredoms, laying with every man, and you men doing the same thing, being whoremongers, and you women need to stop it. Because by the time you get your career, you're dogged out, then no man wants you no more. It's a damaged goods. You didn't have like eight abortions just so you can complete your career. After you've been a murderer all your life, now you want to settle down and get married. That's a sin according to the Bible. Abortion is a sin according to the word of the Lord. You better repent before the Lord bring judgment. Now read the book of Amos chapter 9 verse 7. Are ye not as the children of Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Saith the Lord, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kepha, and the Syrians from Kerr? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. So the Lord said, his eyes are upon the sinful nation, and he, not us, the Lord, the Lord, not us, the Lord, shall destroy it upon the face of the earth. Read on. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. But notice it said he will not destroy the house of Jacob. So the Lord said he's going to destroy the earth. He's going to destroy the sinful nation. But yet he will not destroy the house of Jacob. The house of Jacob represents you 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The truth is our way.